Okay, our second question is an X score of 37. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the interpolation process, figure out what the numbers that are appropriate are, make our diagrams, do the four steps. Hopefully our final answer will, will fit well with the estimate that we make coming out of our diagrams. So the X score is 37. Our first step is to find the sandwiching values. By sandwiching values, what I mean is values that are slightly above and slightly below our X score value. So 39.5 is above and 29.5 is below our X value of 37. So they form the top and bottom of our first scale and also help us to define the top and bottom of our second scale. So that allows us to make the eye diagrams that help us to think through the interpolation process. For the X score, the top is 39.5, the bottom is 29.5. For the cumulative percentage scale, the top is 84% and the bottom is 60%. Then after you get the top and bottom of both of your scales, I think it's a good idea to find the, the midway points on both scales. So on the first scale, for the X scores, we're going to have a midway point of 34.5 and I like to put a little M here so that we don't get it confused with our intermediate value. Then on the second scale the midway point is 72 percent and again if you have any difficulty finding these feel free to just plug in to your calculator the top, add the bottom, divide by two and you'll come away with the midway value. Now that we have the top and bottom of both scales and the midway value on both scales, we can go back to our X score and try to figure out where the intermediate value is in the first scale and at least get a sense for whether we're in the top half or the, sec or the bottom half of that scale. 37 is above the midway point of 35 and a half, or 34 and a half, excuse me. So our X score of 37 is going to belong somewhere in the top half. And before you go any further, what you might want to think about is even though we haven't done any calculations to figure out the decimal yet, you should anticipate that the decimal that we get should be less than 0.5. Because remember, when we calculate a decimal, a decimal expresses the portion of the scale that's above the intermediate value. So we're going to anticipate in our future a decimal less than 0.5. Here we're focused on the estimate and because we're in the top half of the first scale we need to be in the top half of the second scale and we can begin with our estimate. If we're in the top half that means that we're bounded by the very top of 84 percent and the midway point which is 72 percent we can't be below the halfway point if we're in the top half. So our initial estimate is bounded by being in the top half. And then as you start to look at things, you might notice that we're, it looks like we're roughly in the middle of that top, what, top half. So we're not going to be very close to 84 or 72, but sort of in the middle of the two. Middle of that range, the middle point of the top half. After you make your estimate, then you're in a great position to go on and do the four steps of interpolation. We've got a great picture, we've got an estimate. Now let's do a little math and see if things seem to correspond. For step one, we're looking for the interval widths of both scales, both A and B. A refers to the distance between the top and bottom, entire interval width of our first scale. The distance between the top of 39.5 and the bottom of 29 and a half is 10 points. And then in our second scale, the distance between the top of 84 and the bottom of 60% is 24%. Then in step two, we calculate the decimal. The decimal is the most important aspect of what we're calculating. It's sort of the intellectual centerpiece for all of interpolation. We find a decimal. It's going to tell us where we are in this scale and tell us where we need to be in that second scale. The decimal is formed by looking at a fraction and the fraction begins with the distance of the intermediate value of 37 
to the top of the interval, in this case, two and a half points. And then we divide by the entire interval width from top to bottom. Same number as we got in step 1a. 2.5 is the distance. 10 is the interval width. Do a little division. Hop the decimal over from 2.5 to 0 0.25. 0 0.25 becomes the decimal that expresses where we are. A great way to think about that decimal is 0.25, or 25% of the scale is above. So if you're thinking about this as a road trip, you've gone through 75% of the road trip, 25% of the road trip left to go. And just as we expected, the decimal is less than 0.5 because we're in the top half of the scale. So we've got our decimal, and we can use that decimal to communicate with the second scale. Our decimal is 0.25. 25% of the scale is above. So 25% of the scale needs to be above here. In this terminology of the second scale, the entire scale is a distance of 24%. So it's a quarter of 24%, or 6%. And 6% is our step 3 value. And before we finish up, get our step 4 answer, I'd like to remind you of what step 3 does for us every time. Step 3 can be visualized. Step 3 always gives us the distance between the top of our second scale and our final answer. That's why once we get step 3, we use subtraction. We take the top of the second interval, 84%, subtract our step three value consistent with the down arrow visual, and get our final answer of 78%. And then we take our final answer of 78% and ask ourselves, does this number make sense? Is it at least in the general range of what we looked at as our estimate? Notice that our estimate was between 84% and 72%. 78% fits that. And then just looking at it in terms of where the number seems to be in the general vicinity, it's not real close to 84, nor real close to 72, somewhere in the middle. In fact, in this case, it's exactly in the middle. 25% is exactly at the third quarter, which is exactly the middle of the top half. So 78% fits all of those pictures, the general picture that we set up, and then also the second specific component, the detailed estimate, the numerical estimate that we provided. So the visual part makes sense, the estimate makes sense, the final answer makes sense. So when you get that step four answer, step back, take a look at it, and ask yourself, do the numbers make sense? Does it fit my estimate? And if so, you're in excellent shape, and at least haven't made a mistake that you should have caught with the estimate. And that's it for our second question, interpolation question using an X score of 37.